Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we've got a battle of the capital letters as Black playing as the Mayans and of all things Orange takes on Huang playing as the Celts in blue. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal ASAP. Let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now the Mayans are very much a civilization that pushes its players towards archer units their skirmishers can be upgraded to throw a second, albeit weaker, projectile, and their foot archers, except for skirmishers, become progressively cheaper as the game goes on. Where, oh, where are you going? <laughs> All the way up to 30% cheaper in Imperial, which does help them mass their unique unit, the Plumed Archer. This is the fastest foot archer in the game, comes with a small attack bonus against infantry, which might make it pretty good against the Celts. Now, to support your ranged units against the enemy, Mayan walls are 50% cheaper, so you can hide your units, your archer units, behind a lot more of these, and your eagle warriors can be upgraded to get a massive 40 HP boost, which makes them super tanky and super deadly. Now, to help produce as large an army as possible, Mayan resources do last 15% longer, and they do start the game with one extra villager, but 50 less food, which can't help them reach feudal age a little bit faster. Oh. <laughs> and be able to afford those cheaper archer units oh my goodness black no moss growing under his ass he's already here he is laming huang's elephant does huang know that this elephant is here yeah he's seen it but he's gonna oh it's twitching it is moving it wants to attack <gasps> he's gonna move forward he's gonna see that he's getting lamed oh he, he must be wondering why the hell's the elephant not moving <laughs> if only he went one more tile to the south. Oh, Black coming out with the big baller moves right at the start of the game. I love it. Huang pivots to the elephant to the north. He must suspect. He must know that something is up at the same time. This eagle scout gets a villager. <gasps> Huang here being poked and taken apart very early on in the game. Losing 340, rather 400 food. Losing a villager wow oh wow did our mayan come out swinging now before we jump oh my god so much action already at the four minute mark before we jump into uh the rest of the action let's take a look at the celts a civilization built around their need for speed their lumberjacks do work 15 percent faster if huang even had a lumberjack i'd show you which is fantastic because it does give them the wood they need to focus on their siege Celtic Siege Workshops work faster, their Siege Units fire faster, and all Siege Workshop units can be upgraded to get extra HP. Now coming back to the need for speed, their infantry do move faster than normal, starting in Feudal. Their castles and towers can be upgraded to attack faster, and their unique unit, the Woad Raider, is the second fastest infantry unit in the game, second only to a fully upgraded Elite Eagle Warrior, which uh, hopefully we get to see out of our Mayan with that El Dorado upgrade. And in order to feed a big, hungry population, the Celts can actually convert and steal enemy herdables, even if they're standing next to enemy units. This one not exactly standing next to enemy units, although in no risk, no danger of being converted here, as Huang is firmly stuck in his base. His scout doesn't know what to do. He's seen the gazelle. But man, oh man, has our Mayan come out and made a dent. He is taking what I think is a fantastic approach against Huang, who loses his scout. Oh, goodness, but not without a price. Our orange Mayan does end up losing a villager and lost his eagle scout as well. So both players losing their scout units and both players losing a single villager. But as I was saying, Black is making a pretty good attempt here to stop our Celt in his tracks. Uh, Huang, not... Not at all dissuaded here is long distance harvesting the elephant at the same time. Oh, no, he's going to lame the <laughs> he lames the gazelle, but there's already four villagers here should be able to basically clean that gazelle, pick it, cl pick it clean, leave just the bones in the sand. And this is how you have to play against Huang. Probably the what? What do we want to say? The world's best Celt player. And look at this. He's been pushed so far behind. He doesn't even have the wood necessary until the eight minute mark to build a mill. Wow. And oh, <laughs> our Mayan isn't done. Oh, this would be amazing to do in cat in a feudal age. Once he gets those uh, BOGO, those buy one, get one free walls that the Mayans get. 
but a uh, yeah, palisade is just as good for now <laughs> he is laming the resources let's take a look at the resources we know where his primary gold is his primary stone a little bit further back so a bit more secure and a bit more gold in the back a bit more gold in the front for our Celt, who has no clue absolutely no clue that his gold is getting lamed at the same time our mayan hunky dory everything is fine 18 villagers 19 villagers unfortunately for him he hasn't clicked up to uh or maybe he has he's training six villagers definitely has not clicked up to uh feudal age just yet his primary gold nice and secure in the back stone exposed in the front position mill built interestingly on the external side of my favorite lemon bushes here and does have another patch of gold in the front and another uh, rather back and another patch of gold in the front Wong realizes what the hell is happening here black is pulling out all the stops but our Celt in 13 seconds is going to be in feudal our Mayan is he planning to do a fast castle is the name of the game oh ooh, ooh, one second one second he's trying to viper his opponent but uh, the villagers garrison into the town center a little bit too late here for that so the palisades are not complete Wong built one of his own so he can just delete it now but it was uh, the name of the game for our Mayan going up to 23 villagers it must be try to lame Huang as early as possible make him slow down make sure he doesn't reach castle before me while at the same time going fast castle himself I I don't know off the back of 23 villagers sending what looked like two or three villagers up here losing the scout not too sure it's a clean fast castle build although take a look at his food for now we'll see what he decides to do will he build a market and just sell a bunch of wood for the gold no never mind he's got three villagers on gold so yeah so he must be going fast castle Huang for his part also seems to be rushing up to castle though maybe not he's building two spearmen I was looking at their army count zero to zero neither player really interested in making any kind of military moves at the moment oh and look at this blocking the path this is like a villager pull instead of a boar pull this villager has to be so careful has to be so careful two more pokes two more prods and she will die for now she is slowly making her way into the town center blue needs to disengage here huang needs to get the hell out of here and that's exactly why a bunch of arrows fire to the back and now they are both moving away <laughs> orange chasing blue blue stops knows that the spearman is here and look at look at orange i figured he was going fast castle it threw me off a little bit with the additional villagers being sent here market blacksmith for him of course no barracks in the fast castle build and right now look at his resources huang firmly entrenched in feudal age has three extra villagers he's seen this oh yeah he's seen the blacksmith he's seen the market so he knows he's facing a fast castle opponent let's see if he reallocates a few more villagers to gold for now no okay so huang taking a bit of a breather this villager kind of hanging out and look at this huang has managed to sneak in a villager to the back of black's base at the same time his spearmen circle around trying to find where are the resources where are the villagers where are the weak points that i can push into and castle age in a minute 50 second huang nowhere close does he even have a market he will have a market one villager on gold tells me that he will probably sell something once the market completes i think maybe maybe not where the hell did the villager go why did she go <laughs> what why did Huang not finish building this house and then go across and die underneath the town center? Questions without answers. 30 villagers for Huang. He is really, really behind right now. Even though he's got more villagers, he needs 50 more gold. He's not selling anything. So he is happy as a clam to just kind of mine gold. Oris Collar, he's dropped below 800 food. He knows he still needs 50 gold. So by the time he gets that 50 gold, his food count will go up. Is he going to castle drop? What is this? Six villagers going to stone? Spearmen doing whatever they can to chip the paint off of this blacksmith. Not too sure that's going to accomplish much. And one player hits castle. Literally, as the other player clicks up to castle. 
And this is Huang's villager lead right here. Three of the seven villager lead that he has is being used to destroy Palisades. And now his spearman gets surrounded. So this is not looking good for our Kelt at all. Decided to delete the house here. Second town center for our Mayan. This is where I am very curious to see how our Mayan plays this. The town center here is very telling. It's right next to the stone. Which, uh, he, so he's also got six villagers. Not the best location for the miners, at least not this one miner. Huang also has one villager, although has eight, it looks like, on stone. And he is a minute away from castle himself. A barracks finally going up for our mine. A first military building. Huang has his barracks already up. His blacksmith and market as well. And let's see. He's getting <laughs> he's getting stone mining upgrades. And let's see what this last remaining spearman, or maybe a new recruit rather, can do here. Oh, he gets vipered in and the villager gets a pot shot off at him as he moves away. The villagers get out of the town center saying, you know what? You know, we'll, we feel we feel good today. We'll let you live. This is the Mayan largesse. We will we will allow you to escape. But look, we've got a villager. She's got her axe at the ready, not yet a hammer. And right as I say that, it's a hammer. And right as I say that, a siege workshop goes down. Now, the one missing element, one missing component. Oh, OK, he fixes it right as I say it of Black's build is scouting. Take a look at this. He does not see anything that's going on. A few outposts, a few units like the Eagle Scout. He needs units to make sure that this doesn't happen. And now that he sees it happening, he does not need to attack the Palisade. You are not gonna stop this Siege Workshop from going up. You need to get it down immediately. Castle, very defensive location for Wong. Does not wanna lose control of the gold. Unfortunately for him, very well might if archers position themselves right here. This gold becomes basically unminable. This castle also doesn't fully protect the barracks. So a good location for a castle for Huang, not the greatest. And he loses a villager as well. And now his army count has been reset yet again. Two villager lead for our Mayan, who has stopped all Eagle Scout production. <gasps> 650 stone for him. Where, oh, where will you go? Yeah. The stork flies over everything. Peacefully going along its journey to deliver babies all over the world. And beautiful location for a castle here. Look at this insane high ground. If only additional elevation made a difference in this game versus just plain elevation. I mean, <laughs> this hill right here gives you the same bonus as this hill right here. Huang already has one mangonel, but the castle will nullify this. Siege Workshop, our Mayan, he's turtling? What is he doing right now? Where are his Eagle Scouts? He's got three on the field. So he is keeping an eye on Huang. Unfortunately for him, he's keeping an eye on the wrong part of the map. Huang's already on your side. And here they are. He sees the Woad Raiders. Upgrades on them. One armor only. And Fletching will be researched for this castle. Manganel's exit stage left. A third one building as well. But the castle, <gasps> Plumed Archers. Look, if any archer unit can dodge the massive damage output of these rocks that are being hurled by these mangonels, it is the plumed archer, which also, again, and this, this stage, the regular, the base model, comes with a plus one attack bonus against Woad Raiders, i.e. infantry. Eagles got to be careful here, though. The Woads will eat it for breakfast. They must come with an attack bonus against Eagles. Everything does. Yeah, plus two. Which means one poke should be enough. Boop. <laughs> one love tap. And down goes the eagle. He's not repairing the town center. He's not delaying the push. He is exiting himself. This is a massive waste of time here. 18 villagers just completely disappeared. He's getting his own siege workshop. Black, his resource is non-existent. He rushed up so quickly to Castellade to get this castle up he's got five plumed archers i don't think he has enough gold to build any more at the same time huang is here five world raiders three mangonels so black tried to stop huang in his tracks but ultimately you this is like one of those movies where you go back in time and, and everyone keeps telling the protagonist 
you know, you can go back in time, but you'll never change the outcome. <laughs> like the latest Flash movie or uh, or any other uh, looper or any other movie with time travel. You will never change the past. Uh, rather, you will never change your present by going back to change the past. And that is exactly what happened here to our Mayan. Try though he might. Elephant lame. Villager kill. Scout destroying. Scouting with the eagle. Catching the siege workshop before it was even built. At the end of the day, three mangonels are jutting down the center of his base. And look at these slow moving world raiders that were pitched, attached to the mangonel. Where, where are you going? This is your entire army. Where are you going? The eagles are trying to bust. Is he trying to counterattack? I mean, they, look, they move pretty damn quickly for a archer unit. Okay, now he's using houses and stone walls, but he misses a wall off here. That is so sour. Remember, the Mayan walls are 50% off. Not too sure why he's building houses. Oh, never mind. He's got two stone. <laughs> oh, I've casted Age of Empires before, I swear. Any attack bonus against buildings, plus two at the moment. But doesn't even really need it with these three mangonels here. Ooh, one shot gets a bit of HP. She's going to die, but not before completing what looks like, what, 80% of that wall? And this, I don't know that this is the appropriate use of your eight army count out of 14 supply in total. Our Mayan needs more resources, needs to expand backwards, but look at this. Maybe add another mining camp to the right there. Make it a little bit more efficient, but Huang's penetrated for yet a second time. The eagles move in. The eagles run face first into a castle. The plumes realize, hey, there's not much that we can do here against a castle that already killed our eagle brethren. Ooh, Mango War. Does have the high ground, does this orange one, which is the only reason it is still alive, but takes another shot. The quicker firing Celtic siege workshop units. Take a look at this. Not a six attack, but a 4.8 means it fired first. And now there's nine plumes here. Six more coming back. Look, 15 plumes, if microed properly, can absolutely wreck these mangonels. The question is, can he engage into Huang? without Huang noticing, seeing, or reacting in a certain way, rebuilding his town center here. Beautiful move out of our Mayan, not panicking, not making crazy hasty moves, not GGing. Oh, what a shitty attack round there out of that Mangnell for Orange. Who thought the Wode Raiders would move forward. Oh, he gets the Villager. He gets the Villager, no more repairs. Get the weak one, get the weak one. He gets the weak one, but loses his own. <laughs> Oh, right as three villagers moved in to repair it and now these villagers have to exit get the hell out so the question is can seven wodes and two mangonels take on 15 plumed archers plumed archers with plus two attack and range 16 now huang is heading into imperial very interesting he's got no forward positions whatsoever no structures left except a house and he is rushing his butt up to Imperial. He, oh, you've got to rush. You've got to rush with your villagers. Sacrifice the villagers. He is picking off a good number of uh, World Raiders here. Oh, the question is how... Oh, my God. Look at their HP. Oh, this is just... Oh, my God. That's got to be... That's got to be all she wrote for these. Okay, now that, 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 that's the nail in the coffin. That's it. Even though he's got a mangonel here, the Wodes get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my heart is pounding. Such a low stakes game. <laughs> Zero army supply to seven. And yet it's so exciting because you know it's Huang playing it. And Black, kudos to him. Hat tip to him. Getting the elephant, getting a villager, stopping Huang. Huang didn't have a mill for the first, what, what do we say, eight minutes of the game? That is ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen a player manage to do that. But after he stopped that assault, take a look at this base. Take a look at how turtled up he is, how compressed and compact. This comes at a very risky cost. Unfortunately, what Orange tried to do to Blue, Blue did to Orange by absolutely pinning him back in his base. And Black could do nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the loss of the Wode Raiders. I mean, that was just so cool. I want. I mean, the loss of the Plumed Archers. 
So let's see how many shots they actually take. First shot doesn't do much. Second shot doesn't do much. This one removes a whole bunch of HP. So one massive shot, two massive shots, three massive shots, and then a fourth one. Oh, just a little too slow to move those units. And then the absolute destruction of Orange's army. 18 plumes, 12. And look at that APM. Huang with a bit more relaxing in the beginning. But our Mayan towards the middle end of the game. Economy, let's just look for shits and giggles. Our Kelt, <laughs> despite being behind, does get the, uh, in the beginning, does get the trash resources. Not as much gold, but a lot more stone basically almost enough for a castle nine kills no that's not that's not right 51 kills to 20 24 of those are villagers basically 80 percent of that must have been or maybe three quarters of that must have been right here in the last minute of the game and man oh man black had an opportunity here i wonder if he had destroyed this army if huang would have gg'd or if huang would have just doubled down and kept i mean he was a minute and 40 seconds away from imperial Black, nowhere close. Even if he beat that army, he'd have, look at it, 40 gold, 60 food. Wow, oh wow, what an exciting game. And Black putting a fantastic attempt forward to just stop our unstoppable Kelt in his tracks as early as possible, which I think is exactly what you need to do to a player like Huang. And then the addition of the scouting here and here would have been fantastic. But he noticed the Siege Workshop, which is pretty good which is pretty damn good. He just uh, was a little too slow to react, didn't defend this town center. Maybe he should have defended it while building the siege workshop here instead. And 18 villagers had a lot of idle time, a lot of downtime as they escaped. And eventually it is our Kelt with the amazing, I think attack grounds can't be 10. It must be a lot more than 10. Oh, sorry, that's just the one. Oh no, this one dies, right? <laughs> it's dead right as I click it. Well, let's see. 12 for him, so 22 kills for these ones, and then there was a third one that did massive amounts of damage as well, but it died before, and man, oh man, Huang showing us that he is the unstoppable king of the Celts, takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.